Come on, come on, Hill Song, Australia. Are you good this morning? Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Phil, Lucinda. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this moment. Thank you for the friendship. Thank you for what you do for the kingdom. And to everybody, come on, give God praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. You may be seated. You may be seated. Any South Africans here? South Africans? Woo! I've got a report for you. I've got a report for you. We want you to come back. Things are getting much better. Thank God. I'm really serious. Things are getting much better. The Lord is answering our prayers. And the change has begun. It's so good, you know, Pastor Phil, to look back and then to see the work of what the Lord is doing. And then you can point there and say, Lord, thank you. I've contributed to that. I've contributed to that. And to God be the glory. Keep on praying for us. But we are coming back, you know, as we have won the rugby even yesterday. It tells you that uh, God is restoring things. Amen. Well, a little bit more about myself so that you can appreciate the person who's standing here. I always tell people that I'm a living miracle. You know, at the age of 10, due to the challenges in my family, I had to run away from home. I was a child number eight. Imagine my father had two wives in one house. And life was so heavy. Age 10, I ran away. And I was in the streets of Johannesburg for five years. I lived as a street kid. At the age of 15, a woman picked me up and said, you know what? Uh, I know who you are, and I know what the Lord is going to do with your life. Come with me, and uh, I will restore your life. So I'm saying to you, a person standing here, it's a miracle. I never thought I'll be standing in a place like this, Pastor Phil, and come and minister the word of God. While you have that in mind, it was in 1994 when I responded to the call of God upon my life. You know, I was still young at that time. I was naive, laid back. I couldn't communicate that well. My English was very, very poor, understanding that I was taught how to read at the age of 15. I grew up in a poverty-stricken environment. My family was the poorest of them all. You know, I'm saying that because I remember very well my neighbor on the other side was poor and the neighbor on the other side was poor. But they would look at me and say, we are poor. So if poor people look at you and say you are poor, you must know that you are very, very, very poor. But in the midst of all that, I knew that the call of God was upon my life and I approached my pastor at that time, I said, I want to serve God for the rest of my life to better the lives of our people. And my pastor said these words in Zulu. He gave me a Bible at that time and he gave me these words. He said, Hamba ngala mantla onawo, which simply means go in the strength that you have. At that time, I did not understand what are you saying, you know, and what amazed me at that time is that my pastor did not address me based on my present circumstances. He addressed me based on my future capabilities. He saw something that I could not see in me. And he said, go in the strength that you have. Allow me this morning to use the very same words as part of my topic this morning. Go in the strength you have. Look at the person next to you and say, go in the strength that you have. I know you are wondering, just like me, as I wondered, which strength do I have? Just hold on, hold on on that point. And I think by now you know that these are the words that were used or words that were given to Gideon by the angel. And then we find the scripture in the book of Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, please read with me from verse 11. The scripture says, The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak tree of Ophrah that belonged to Joash, where his son Gideon was threshing weed in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Remember, 
All the time when they were harvesting the children of Israel, the, the Midianites will come and take their harvest. So Gideon was hiding the harvest that he had. In verse 12, it says, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But say, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And I've put there in bracket a question that is asked by many of us. If the Lord is with us, why this thing has happened to us? Maybe you are seated there, you are saying the very same thing. If the Lord is with me, why I had to go through what I have gone through? I remember there was a moment I was asking the very same question. If the Lord is with me, you know why I had to go through what I have gone through? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about, the, uh, about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. Probably you are seated here, you feel the Lord has abandoned you. You know, the Lord has forgotten about you. Let me tell you, he has not. God is up to something. You look at verse 14. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have. Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? And that is a beautiful scripture right there. And I'm also here this morning to say to somebody, go with the strength that you have. Go in that strength, you know. And uh, I, I love ministering in a different way. I don't know if you know those movies. Just in the beginning, they show you the end of the movie. And then thereafter, they start acting the movie. And I want to do exactly that this morning. I want to give you the end of the movie so that even if you missed what is in between, but you know the end of the movie. Is that okay? Now, let me give you the nuggets of the end of my movie. If you are writing down, here are my nuggets that I want to give to you. Number one, God doesn't address you based on your present circumstances, but on your future capabilities. Please remember that in life, that God will never address you based on where you are, but he's addressing you based on your future. If you can remember that and capture that in your spirit, your life will be much easier. Number two, here's my second nugget. Courage is not having the strength to go on. It is going on even when you don't have the strength to do so. That is courage. There will be a moment in life you'll wake up in the morning and you'll say to yourself, I don't feel like doing this. I don't want to do this. But courage says, even if you don't feel like doing it, but for the mere fact that you are doing it, that is courage. Life is all about that. You have to do something even if you don't feel like doing it. Number three, in life, you have to go by what you know, not by what you feel. Always go by what you know. You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning and feel, I don't know how many times I felt like I don't want this wife. You know? It's just the feeling. It's just the feeling. But I go with what I know. I know she's my wife. I know she's the mother of my children. That is why you cannot trust feelings. You must go with what you know. You will wake up in the morning and you feel she does not love me. It's a feeling, but you know deep down in your heart that she loves me and she is committed. Amen. Am I helping somebody? It's like a prophecy from that direction. Now, number four, it's not the size of what you are up against that matters, but what the creator has put in you. That is what matters. It's not about the size of what is standing before you that matters. It's what is in the inside, what God has put in the inside of you. Because most of the time you look at what is around, it's not going to make sense. It will look big, but don't concentrate on what is on the outside. Concentrate on what is in the inside, what the Lord has deposited in the inside of you. Here's my last nuggets, and thereafter we minister the word. When you feel like you can't take it anymore, always remember, 
Always remember, you are stronger than you think. How's that? There will be a moment you feel, I cannot handle this. That moment will come in your life, in your marriage, in your business, in every area of your life. You will feel, I cannot handle this anymore. But you must be reminded at all times that you are stronger than you think. You know, when God created and designed you, he took into account or consideration everything you would need for today and the future. Did you hear what I said? When God designed you and created you, he took into account the things that you would need for today and the things that you would need for tomorrow. When God created you, it's not like after creating you, he was shocked that, you know, what will I do about this human being? What should I do about Chris? No, 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 no. You know, after creating me, God deposited some things in the inside of me for my today and for my tomorrow. You know, just like an SUV car. I've asked the picture there. If you can show them the picture of an SUV car. You know, maybe the first one. Let's show them the first one, please. Uh, you, 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 you'd look at the SUV, you know, on road. It looks beautiful. You know, you might underestimate that car. You might think it's a CC because it's so beautiful. Are you with me? But listen to me. An SUV car, it is not just made for on road only. It is also made for off-road. Look at that. It's also made for off-road. Can I declare to somebody this morning that you are not just a pretty face? People might look at you and think you are a pretty face. My dear, I want to tell you in the inside of you, you know, there are capabilities. There's a strength for you also to face the off-road season. Off-road is coming your way, but you are made for old road season. You are stronger than you think. You are equipped to face tough season. You are not what your biological genetics says you are. Sometimes people might look at your structure that you are just a small boy, you are just a woman. Let me tell you, they've never seen what you are capable, my girl. You are bigger than what they see on the physical side. It's not about your genetical, you know, or biological, you know, design. It's not the size of what you are up against that matters. What matters is what God, the creator, has put in you. You are built for on-roads and off-road season. And not only that, you are graced and empowered to conquer mountains, equipped and induced to absorb pressure and weight. You see, an SUV does not get surprised when it faces the off-roads. Does not say, I want you know, to be equipped already. It's equipped for that. That is why I'm saying to you, always go by what you know, not by what you feel. Can I put it right there? That sometimes what is compromising our lives is what we don't know. If you don't know, you will even bargain for what you already have. This is what Adam and Eve did. They bargained with the devil for what they already had. The devil said to them, if you eat from this tree, you will be like God. Yet the Bible says they were created in the image and in the likeness of God. And the devil comes in because they didn't know they begin to bargain for what they already know. Church, can I speak to you this morning? I want to say to you what is compromising your life is what you don't know. But if you know who you are, if you know the one who has created you, if you know the one who has saved you, you will never compromise. You will never settle for less because you know who you are. Even when you are faced with the challenges, if you are faced with the storms, you know that in the inside of you, God has deposited some stuff that will make you to go over what what you are going through at that particular time. But I know the biggest question this morning will be, why God wants us to go in the strength we have? God, you know the challenges that are ahead of us. But here you are, you are coming to me, you are saying I must go with the strength that I have. 
instead of giving me more strength, instead of empowering me to be a giant, but you are saying to me, no, 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 I must go with the strength that I have. So the big question this morning that we must answer, why God wants us to go in the strength that we have? I am glad you have asked that question. And that is our assignment this morning. Number one, let's answer that. I have discovered over the years that little is much when God is in it. Little is much when God is in it. My Lord, Gideon replied in verse 15, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. I remember that time. Lord, I was taught how to read at the age of 15. How can I do this? How can I do this? I cannot speak well. I remember in South Africa, you, you finish your metric at the age of 17. While I was in metric, I was actually 22, 22 in metric. And at that time, I was still even struggling about life. And I could sense the call of God and say, Lord, there are many people who can speak well. They, they can speak these people. They can speak English. They don't even have to struggle in speaking English. If you would have met me a few years ago, you would totally agree that what you see today it's a serious miracle because the, 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 the substance that I took at the tender age, they also impacted my thinking, my brain. The doctors never thought that I'll be able to speak like this because I even lost my speech and I was very slow in speaking. So when I was called, I said, I cannot speak. I cannot do this. But I remember, it's like the Lord was saying, you are a good candidate to be used by me. Little is much when God is in it. Look today what the Lord has done. I'm standing right here, say, in Australia, not by my strength, but by the grace of God. So take the little that you have and give it to the Lord and see what the Lord will do with the little that you give unto me. Never underestimate what you have. Take it and give it to the Lord. He will make it big. Number two, why God wants us to go in the strength that we have. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. You know, sometimes we think we need to polish ourselves. We need to be, become better for God. We need to be smart for God. Lord, wait for me until I am okay. I want to look good. God does not operate like that. In verse 16 of chapter 6, the Lord said to him, I will be with you and I will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Can you see what God is saying here? He says, you know, I will minimize your, your, your enemies. I will minimize your mountain. If you are with me, your mountains will be minimized because it is no longer you. The very same thing that used to be, to be scary, the very same thing that used to be intimidated, you know, that thing will be minimized. You know what God does? The mountains does not go down. You know, when I'm saying it will be minimized, he's actually elevating you. It's like you taking a plane. The, the mountain that used to be big because you were on the ground, the moment you take a plane, the mountain now, it is so small. This is what God does. He says, I will elevate you. I will take you to the next level. The things that used to intimidate you will never intimidate you because I am the one who qualify those who say they are not qualified. Let me tell you, my dear, just give yourself and the Lord will do the rest because he's a faithful God. When he begins a good work in you, he will make sure he accomplish what he has started. I love God. He's totally different to a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Sometimes a boyfriend promises a lot of things. Say, I'll love you, I'll buy you a train and all that and that. At the end of the day, they don't fulfill their promises. But with God, whatever he promises, he will make sure he accomplish that. Amen. Number three, why God wants us to go in the strength that we have. God doesn't want to share his glory with men. He doesn't want to share his glory with men. In verse 2 of chapter 7, the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me. Can you imagine? This is God. He says, the people who are with you, they are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. 
lest Israel claim glory for itself against me. Now God says, the people around you, there are too many. You know, if you achieve all this thing, you know, they will take glory. I said, Lord, but I need these people. I need these friends. I need the crowd so that I can achieve. I mean, here are the people, 32,000 people, they are with Gideon. And Gideon feels confident at that time to say, I've got a great army. The Lord says, no, 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 it's too much. I don't work like that. You know what I want you to do? Tell those who are fearful to go home. Amazing. 22,000 men. They were saying they're with Gideon, yet they were fearful. They were just waiting for that opportunity to be told to go home. And they had to go home. They, he was left with 10,000. God comes back to him and says, the number is still too big. They were reduced to 300. Can you imagine what was happening with Gideon? But the Lord says, this number is good. You know what I've learned over the years? You know, I've been in ministry now for almost 30 years. And let me tell you, I, I had friends, I had people coming saying, Pastor, we are with you and all that and that. And I saw them leaving and all that. But I realized that God will allow people to leave you, not because he hates you, for your own good. So that you can see him. Sometimes the crowds, they make us not to see God. Do you remember the story of Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus had to run and leave the crowd so that he can see Jesus. When he was separated from the crowd, he was able to see God. I want to say to somebody here, I don't know who has left you. I don't know what you have gone through as an individual. But see God in those things that are happening in your life. They might have left you, but the truth of the matter is that may the good God take glory in your story. May they see God in your life in the name of Jesus. So God doesn't want to share his glory with anybody. And in verse 7 of chapter 7, the Bible says, The Lord told Gideon, with these 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. Hallelujah. Send them home, but remain with this. Because the few with God is majority. So that God can take glory. Sometimes we feel lonely. Sometimes we feel abandoned. But let me tell you, sometimes things that do happen so that God can take glory in our story. May the good God do you good and see glory in that story of yours. Number four, why God wants us to go in the strength that we have. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is not yours. In fact, the battle has already been won. All that you need to do is to show up and take your rightful position. You know, you don't need the numbers to fight this battle because the battle has already been won. All that you need to do is just to show up. Show up. Just get into the ring. Isn't that amazing? That you know that the, the, the referee is on your side. The last man is on the side. You know, everybody, it's like God paid everybody. He paid them, everybody. Just before you go into the field, we do a lot of those in South Africa. We pay, we, we, we pay, we pay, we pay everybody. And then we tell the team, all that you need to do, just show up. And when you show up, you know, you weak as you are, you know I might be weak, but everybody on this side is with me. So they will make sure that I win. Or can I tell somebody that all that you need to do, you know, just show up. God says, I've got this. I've got this. You are covered. Just get into the ring. Your role is to get into the ring because I will do the rest. Come on, give God praise this morning. All that you need to do is to show up. But sometimes we still don't believe. In verse 9 of chapter 7, the Bible says, That night the Lord said, Get up, go down into the Midianites' camp, for I have given you victory over them. But if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant, Pura. Listen to what the Midianites are saying, and you will be greatly encouraged. Then you will be eager to attack. Read that scripture when you get home. You know, God says, maybe you are still afraid. You don't know what I'm going to do. So go to the camp at night. Now this guy goes to the camp with his servant. When they reached into the camp, 
Now the people in the camp, they already had a dream last night. Now they are talking about this dream that I saw a bread from the mountain falling and this bread and then it crushed the camp. And the other one is testifying and says, surely this should be the army of Gideon. So we are defeated. What does that mean? The very same thing that we are afraid of, the very same thing that we are afraid of is actually afraid of you. While you are busy planning to attack, the very same thing you want to attack is, is intimidated about you. I want to declare to you this morning that the very same thing you are afraid of, it is afraid of you. All that you need to do is to take your rightful position and see what the Lord will do on your behalf. Never be intimidated by the devil. The battle belongs to the Lord. He will fight for you. He will be by your side. He will make sure you win this one. You're not going to lose this one because you are not stepping into the ring alone, but you are stepping into the ring with Jesus, the creator of the universe. Number one, I said to you, why we must go with the strength that we have. I said, little is much when God is in it. Number two, I said, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Number three, I said, God doesn't want to share his glory with men. Number four, the battle belongs to the Lord. And the final point this morning is that God wants to demonstrate that he's a sovereign God in our weaknesses. He wants to demonstrate that he is sovereign. Why he wants to, to do that? You know, he wants to demonstrate in the universe that I am a sovereign God. In verse 19 of chapter 7, Judges, the Bible says, Gideon and the hundred men, because remember, he divided the group into three. Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. Just after they had changed the guard, they blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars. Watch this. Grasping the torches in their, hair, in their left hands. This is very important. The torch, which is part of your vision, you hold it with your left hand and holding in their right hands the trumpet, which symbolizes your worship, your vision in your weak hand. Simply means in your weakest moment, in the midst of the battle, when the battle is on, you must never lose your vision. When things are tough, even if you are feeling tired, never lose your vision. On the other hand, you hold your trumpet, not with your left hand, but with your right hand. In the midst of the battle, your worship must be strong. Your worship must be on the right hand. You get stronger and stronger in your worship in the midst of the battle. You lift up the vision. You, you make sure that the worship, it is very strong. This is how we defeat the enemy. We don't lose our vision in the midst of the battle. We remember the one who has called us. We remember the picture he has revealed unto us. We remember our future. We remember the promises of God. We remember what he's going to do with our lives. When the devil says, erase that picture of your future, you say, devil, I will never. I'll keep on raising the banner of the Lord. I'll keep on raising the vision of the Lord. At the same time, you continue to draw the, to blow the trumpet. You get stronger in your worship. Hill song, I know you are very strong in worship. Keep blowing the trumpet. Keep blowing the trumpet. Never lose your trumpet. Never lose your trumpet. When you continue to do that, the sovereignty of God will be demonstrated. And the Bible says, at the end of the day when they did that, the camp got confused. The people got confused. They started fighting against each other. That is the power of keeping the vision alive. 
and the power of worship. When you worship, the devil gets confused. Instead of fighting you, they end up fighting each other. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. We go down on our knees. We go down through worship and the devil gets confused. Let me finalize with these words this morning. You know, when you say to people, go in the strength that you have, somebody might be seated here and say, I don't have any strength. I don't feel like going on. I want to say to you, whatever is lacking this morning, God can fill it. Whatever is lacking, God can fill it. Whatever is broken this morning, God can fix it. Whatever is lost, God can find it. I was lost some other time. I thought my life was a waste I will never recover. When I looked at my life at that time, at the age of 25 later, my peers at that time, they had everything. I was still trying to restore my life. Everything was lost. God can find whatever is lost. Whatever is dead, God can resurrect it. God can resurrect it. And finally, whatever is weak, God can strengthen it. I don't know how you feel this morning, but we have a God as you stand on your feet and invite Phil to come and lead you in a prayer. I still want to declare, go in the strength that you have. If the Lord has done this for me, he can do it for you, sir. Don't look around, but look in the inside. There's a strength that God has deposited in the inside of you. For the mere fact that you are still alive, God has preserved you for this reason. In the name of Jesus. Keep on rising and let us meet on top. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Yeah, come on, let's stand and let's thank Pastor Chris. What a beautiful, challenging, encouraging word. Thank you. And uh, I just, I, I really loved just what you shared at the end, Pastor Chris, just about uh, that trumpet and, and the worship, because it has been part of our story. Um, but I just felt that was, that was an in-season for us. There's vision for our future. We're excited about where God is taking us. Uh, but we never want to lose sight and, and never, never lose uh, the heart of worship because uh, it's so powerful. And um, so thank you. Thank you for encouraging us in that. And thank you for your story. We're inspired. Um, don't you just love... You know, seeing lives that you know God has done a miracle. And Pastor Chris is, is a man like that. God took hold of his life off the streets of Johannesburg. He's got a beautiful wife, got beautiful kids, and committed to building a church that helps build the nation that God has placed him in and called him to. That's how the kingdom of God works, doesn't it? God takes the lives of those who are open to him and can do anything when we're obedient and follow Jesus the way He uh, leads us and guides us. And every one of us has a beautiful story that God is doing or desires to do in and through us. And before we conclude the service, I'm going to pray. But I just, I just want us to take a moment to worship. Because I believe on the back of that word from Chris, it's, a, it's important. You know, for some of us, we felt like that. We felt like going the strength that that I have. I don't feel like I have much right now. But when you worship, you're reminded. You're reminded of who He is, of His power, of His presence, of His strength working in and through you. So we're going to worship before we conclude and then I'm going to pray. Come on. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. 
bow our heads and close our eyes and I want to take a moment and pray for people here who would say, Phil, you know what? I'm away from God and I don't want to live like that anymore. Whether you're here at one of our other locations, I believe God is speaking to your heart right now. And this is your opportunity to come home, which really means just to make your peace with God, to open your heart to Him. And I'd love to pray a simple prayer, a prayer of surrender, a prayer that I believe as you pray this prayer, I'd love to pray it with you. Uh, you begin to walk in this new relationship with God, your heavenly Father. And like I say, it's a simple prayer. It's a prayer of asking Jesus to bring forgiveness into your heart. And I believe that's exactly what he'll do. And uh, just like you've heard Pastor Chris talk about his story, maybe your story is not quite as dramatic, but the reality is we've all got a story and we all need to find hope and answers and we find them in Jesus when we open our heart to Him and allow Him to do what only He can. Forgive us and give us a brand new start and help us to begin to walk our lives with God as our Heavenly Father. And so today, like I said, it'd be my privilege to pray this prayer, a simple prayer, a prayer of surrender, a prayer of a new beginning with you. So if you want to pray that prayer with heads bowed and eyes closed here and at every one of our locations, if you want to be part of this prayer, I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, you can just lift your hand. 
And we're going to pray together wherever you're standing. I believe God's going to meet you right where you're at. One, He loves you. Two, hey, have the courage to say yes to Him today. Three, just lift your hand wherever you are. Say, that's me. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Hands raised all around the auditorium. God bless you. God bless you. Wonderful. Wonderful. At every one of our locations, if that's you, you just lift your hand. And, and, and God's going to meet you where you're at. And we're going to pray together. And if your hand's raised, why don't you just repeat this simple prayer after me. And together as a church family, uh, we, we're going to pray this with you. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son Jesus. Thank you for your Son Jesus. Thank you for everything He's done for me. Thank you for everything He's done for me. And right now, right now, I open my heart, open my, heart my, life, my life, everything I am, everything I am, and I give it to you. I give it to you. I thank you. I thank you. From this moment, from this moment, I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm leaving the past behind. I'm leaving and I'm walking forward into my future with Jesus as my Lord, as my Savior, as my friend. Amen. Come on, let's congratulate everybody who prayed that prayer. Well done. And if you prayed that prayer here at any one of our locations, we just want to say, man, we believe in that decision so much. We want to give you a gift. It's a Bible, that's what I've got here. The New Testament of God's Word starts with the story of Jesus. We love to give this to you because we believe uh, that prayer is the beginning and uh, God's Word is foundational to seeing our lives move forward. And so we'd love to give you that. And uh, we'd love to grab your details. And the only reason we ask to do that is because we're a church and we just want to help you on your spiritual journey. And there's a whole lot that we do to help people grow and go forward. Uh, in walking with Jesus and getting to know Him and growing in their faith journey. And so we want to help you with that. So if you give us your details, we can just let you know about all that is available to help you grow and move forward. So one more time, come on, let's congratulate everybody. Well done.